Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here coming to you from Community of Grace Lutheran Church. Glad to have you with us. And previously at Community of Grace, uh, we talked about the ear last week. We talked about how important the ear is and how important it is to not only hear, but to listen. And we looked at a story about listening to Jesus. Today, we turn to the eye. And Jesus has a story for us today about the eye and how important the eye is. Uh, I'm going to put it right here for you. Uh, it looks like this eye hasn't had a lot of sleep. Kind of matches the bags under my eyes. Genetic, not lack of sleep. And so we're going to look at the eye here. And interestingly, there are dad jokes about eyes. Would you like to hear them? No. That's a rhetorical question. We're going to do it anyway. And by the way, these are extra cornea. Here we go. What did the right eye say to the left eye? Between you and me, something smells. I thought I'd start strong. Uh, did you hear about the webpage for people who suffer from chronic eye pain? It's a site for sore eyes. <laughs> Why did the phone wear glasses? He'd lost all his contacts. Nothing. Uh, why, what do you call it when an Apple user looks you in the eye? Eye contact. You get it, the little eye cap. Uh, what did, why did the teacher who needed glasses quit her job? She couldn't handle her pupils. <laughs> it's a tough crowd today. <laughs> uh, where do rabbits get their eyes checked? The hoptometrist. Thank you. Uh, where can you always locate the I? Between H and J. All right, last one. What kind of vision do all the sanitation workers have? Binocular vision. No? All right. The I. Let's give you an eye test. Let's see how your vision is. We're going to put something up on the screen for you here. What do you see? Is it clear, or do we need to work on your lenses a bit? Now, last week we talked about how important the ear is and what a magnificent work of creation the ear is. So today we're going to turn to the eye, and we're going to put a little diagram up for you on the screen. And let me read for you how the eye works. Light enters the cornea, the clear window of the eye. The cornea bends the light so it passes through the pupil. The iris makes the pupil bigger or smaller, which determines how much light gets to the lens. The lens angles the light through the clear vitreous to focus it on the retina. The retina converts the light into electrical impulses. These impulses travel along the optic nerve to your brain, producing an image. And while all of this sounds complicated, that all happens in less than a second, enabling you to see the world around you. Isn't that amazing? Think about all the things that you see throughout a day. Just look around where you are right now, the room you're in, and what you see. Uh, from the time we wake up until we close our eyes when we go to bed at night, we see all kinds of things. From our bedroom, the bathroom, we see the cereal bowl, we see the dishwasher, we see the car, the interior of the car, we see trees, we see roads, we see people, we see insects, we see animals, sunrises, sunsets. We are bombarded with the wonders of all those sights around us. And it all happens within a second as we look and see the world around us. Now, as we talked about last week, just as hearing is different from listening, seeing is different than noticing. And that difference between seeing and noticing plays a very important role in the iconic story that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 10. We know this story as the Good Samaritan. The story begins with a man who's making his way from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and it is a downhill walk, about 17-some miles. In Jesus' day, very, very treacherous because bandits would line the way. So you would never make that trip by yourself, but apparently this man did, and he's set upon by thieves. They beat him up, they strip him, they rob him, and then they leave him to die on the side of the road. Now, Sometime later, a priest makes that same journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. The priest was not unlike pastors back in Jesus' day. 
And Jesus says that the pastor or the priest sees the man, but then crosses the road and passes by the man on the other side without stopping to help. A little later, a Levite and probably his group of people come down from Jerusalem to Jericho. The Levite was responsible for setting up all the stuff for the worship service. But we'll change it a little bit. We'll make it a worship leader, and we'll make the worship leader a she, even though there were never female leaders in Jesus' day. So this worship leader is walking down the road, and she, too, sees the man, but then she crosses the road to the other side, passes him by without helping. Now, before we find out what happens in the rest of the story, let's check your vision once again. Let's see if it's getting any clearer. So that's where we were. Let's change the lens a little bit. See how it looks. It's getting a little clearer. We're getting there. So, Jesus now adds a piece of controversy to the story. The priest and the Levite, the pastor, the worship leader, they're well-respected religious leaders in their community. You would expect one or both of them to be the heroes of the story. But that's not the case, because Jesus introduces someone radical, a Samaritan. Now, the Jews and the Samaritans were bitter enemies, because the Jews saw the Samaritans as impure, as unworthy of God, because they were mixed race. They were people who were Jewish people who had intermarried with Gentiles. To give you a sense of the hatred between the two groups, there's a rabbi who was purported to say that he would rather be a woman than a Samaritan, and he'd rather be a dog than a woman. So that tells you what they thought about Samaritans. So when Jesus introduces this Samaritan, you can imagine that this Jewish audience boos, if not externally, at least internally. And then it got worse, because the Samaritan is going to be the hero of the story, not the Jews. Jesus says this Samaritan not only sees the man, but notices him. And he goes over to the man, he binds his wounds, he puts him on his donkey, he takes him to an inn, and then pays all of his expenses in order to nurse that man back to health. Where the priest and the Levite saw the man and passed him by, the Samaritan saw the man, noticed him, and helped him. All right, let's check your eyes, see how we're doing. All right, we're going to change the focus just a little bit more. All right, starting to see? Excellent. Now, Jesus uses this story to answer a question, and the question is, who is my neighbor? And it's a good question to ask because the Old Testament summarizes for us the Ten Commandments this way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if God wants us to love our neighbors, it stands to reason we want to know who our neighbors are. We want to get that focus so that we can do a good job of loving our neighbors the way God wants us to. And so Jesus answers the question, who is my neighbor, by saying a neighbor is anyone in need. And here's what he means by that. A neighbor is anyone in need. So your neighbor isn't just the person who lives next door to you. It's not just the person who lives across the street or in uh, the same area you live in. It's not even the person who looks like you. Your neighbor is any human being in need. But then Jesus takes that question and he turns it on its head. And he creates a new punchline to the story. He moves from who is my neighbor to this question. What kind of neighbor are you? When you look at the world around you, what do you see? But more than that, what do you notice? Now, I don't think it's a stretch from our perspective, the death and resurrection of Jesus, to see that man in the ditch as a Jesus figure. Because that man in the ditch, that neighbor in need, is someone created in the image of God, someone Jesus died for. And in a sense, it's Jesus there. When we see our neighbor, when we notice our neighbor, we're seeing Jesus. We're noticing Jesus. 
And it's not a stretch to imagine that the Good Samaritan is a Jesus figure because the Good Samaritan responds the way that Jesus does, with mercy, with kindness, compassion, and with help. And so when we see our neighbor in need, when we notice our neighbor in need, we're seeing and noticing Jesus. And when we respond and when we help, we're carrying out the mission of Jesus. Now, the Good Samaritan is one of Jesus' most popular stories, one of his most iconic stories. It's a beautiful story, but it's also a story that can quickly make us feel guilty because it's not easy to love our neighbors. For one thing, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the need, the human need around us. It's so much. And what can one or two acts of kindness do in the midst of a world so broken and shattered? And so sometimes we build up these walls, we become paralyzed to inaction. We don't want to see because we don't feel we can do anything. The other problem is there are people out there, it's just really hard to love. It's hard to see them as created in the image of God, let alone to see them as Jesus. So it's difficult sometimes to love our neighbors. And so this is a story that can cause a lot of guilt. And that's why it's important to remember that this story is rooted in the bigger story of God's lavish grace. The story of a God who sees all of us, who notices all of us, who responds to all of us with grace. This is not a story about rules and regulations. This is a story about grace and responding to the grace that we've experienced in Jesus. So, let's see if we've got your vision working a little better. All right, here's where we were, and let's just tweak it one more time. What do you see? And what do you notice? So Jesus, that neighbor in need, that good Samaritan, says to you today, I see you. I notice you. And I come to grace you. So now go in the power of my grace and do likewise. So here's your Go Bold, Live Grace assignment for this week. This week, make it your prayer to ask God this question. God, who is my neighbor? Who do you want me to see this week? Who do you want me to notice? Just one person this week. Now, it might be someone in your neighborhood. It might be someone on a street corner. There may be something you see on TV that moves you, an organization helping out those in need. You might want to support them. Maybe you look at creation as your neighbor this week. We're bombarded right now with stories about droughts and fires in Europe and heat waves. Creation is hurting. And maybe that's what you'll see this week. So together, let's make it our bold, reckless prayer. Jesus, who do you want me to see? Who do you want me to notice this week? And how, by your grace, can I help? Martin Luther says it this way in his prayer. God of justice and mercy... Give food to those who are hungry, water to those who are thirsty, love to those who are lonely, healing to those who are sick, comfort to those who are troubled, and awakening to those who are asleep. And I would add in Jesus, do that through us. Amen. Hey, it's good to have you with us today as we celebrate God's grace together. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we're, we're really honored to have you here. And there are a couple of different ways you can communicate with us. You'll notice that as you watch via Facebook or YouTube, there are places where you can comment. And so if you want to check in, say hello, you've got a prayer request, uh, or you've got a question, you can post that on the comments. We will respond to you. Or if you're watching us for the first time, you can text the word NEW to that number, 623-295-2484. It's right here, 623-295-2484. Text the word NEW. We're going to send you a card to Starbucks, just our way of saying thanks. And you can use that card for yourself, or maybe you'll see a neighbor this week and want to hand that off to your neighbor. You can also use the word PRAYER. Text that to us, 623-295-2484. We'll pray for you this week. And if you'd like to know more about what's happening here at Community of Grace, this fall, and um, Advent's just four months away. If you want to know all that's going on, text the word events to 623-295-2484. So we're going to be back in just a moment. We're going to celebrate communion together, but I thought it'd be great if we could get our hearts and souls ready by listening to the band. 
Praise the Lord. Praise His name. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. He is King and He reigns. Praise the On the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you eat that piece of bread that you have, that cracker, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the wine or the grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, we are now into August, and it has been a remarkable summer here at Community of Grace because of your giving, all the many, many things that we've talked about over these last several weeks that we've been able to do together. And we're just getting started. Uh, we are moving into uh, the fall now, and the rhythm of life is going to change a bit. But the needs aren't going to go away. And so this is our opportunity as a community of faith to continue to make a difference in the world, to be good Samaritans in a tangible way right now through our giving. So if you believe in this mission and ministry, you believe in the work that we're doing 
in bringing God's grace to the world in the name of Jesus. You can text your gift in the uh, message you put in how much you'd like to give and then send that to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. Over here we have a QR code. If you hold your phone up, your iPhone, with your camera on, uh, it'll pick up that QR code and it'll bring you to some prompts that will help you give. And then you'll see below, right below me here, uh, boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving. That's boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving. And that will provide you some opportunities uh, to give on a more consistent basis if you would like to do that. So we thank you for your generosity. Uh, we are able to come to you because of your generosity. We are able to do worship together, to meet the needs of our community together. And so thank you very, very much for your support of this part of God's mission and ministry through Community of Grace. Um, we've got some things coming up now we'd like you to know about. We, uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're sort of moving now into the fall. And uh, even though it's still August yet, we've got some good things coming up. We'll tell you more about that in the next week or two. But next weekend, we are coming up to probably the iconic story for Jesus. Uh, the, the Good Samaritan is one of them. This is the other. And this is the lost and found stories. And uh, for anybody who feels like a stray, this is the story for you next weekend. My favorite chapter in the entire Bible, Luke chapter 15. And uh, we're going to be back with you for worship. We come to you at 5 o'clock every Saturday night, Facebook and YouTube. It's available on demand, and then we're available too for worship in-house at 9 and 10.30 every weekend. Uh, we've got a big event coming up on Saturday night, August 27th, 5 to 7 p.m. This is for the whole family of grace, um, families, youth, uh, anybody who really wants to come, there's going to be free food, it's going to be a water night, and uh, as you can see, buckets of fun. So if you want to come on out on a nice, hot August night, uh, you can join us for that, and uh, we'd be happy to be a part of that with you. And then the next day is our magical night of music, and we've got two shows, uh, 2 o'clock on Sunday, the 28th, and then 5 o'clock. You can see the tickets are $3.00. If uh, you want to hold your, Q or your camera up for that QR code, you can do that. You can go to boldrecklessgrace.org. There's a link there. Uh, if you buy your tickets online, there is a surcharge that's not charged by us. It's charged by Eventbrite, so your ticket will be more than $3. Uh, I can tell you we're pretty close to sold out. So if you're thinking of being at that show in a couple weeks, you're going to want to get your tickets now, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic show. Buy some for your friends as well. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go bold, live grace. <laughs>